This is the Stratomatic Baseball Excel 1973 Carryover League. Brought to you by the Shrimp Trawler YouTube channel. Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 7073 Carryover League. Tonight, we are in the American League East with a really cool little series here. A team with playoff pedigree, the Baltimore Orioles and the New York Yankees, a team didn't do much during this era. They were around 500 in the early 70s most of the time, but they got a pretty darn good roster. And this series has been rather a lot of fun. Um, we'll just go right into it. It's a lot to talk about. So we'll just take it back to game one. Series opens up in Yankee Stadium. Mike Cuellar versus Jim McAndrew. In one of the weirdest second innings in Oriole history, Mike Cuellar, to his great fortune, after loading the bases with an out, it's a two-base error on the right fielder. Roy Foster, a free agent signed in the offseason. Then a strikeout, and then a bunch more base runners. The Yankees get nine, nine unearned runs in the second inning off of Mike Cuellar and ride that to a 9-1 series uh, uh, win in game one of the series. And the Orioles continue to slump and hover around 500. This is a team that won the World Series two years ago, and they're still in that prime of the early 70s where they should be competing for the pennant. So it's rather disappointing to see them scuffling like this. Uh, let's go to game two now. Game two. Similar kind of pedigree. Another lefty, Dave McNally, against another righty, Mel Stoudemire. And the Yankees uh, continue to get on base here. Uh, Buford hits a solo homer to start the game off, but the Yanks get three runs in the second off McNally. But then the Orioles, in the fourth inning, Foster hits a solo homer. Then Boog Pal, big story here. Horrific slump. Killing and tanking the Orioles. Until now. Boog Pal has caught fire in this series. A solo homer here. Three more doubles in the inning. The Orioles take a 5-3 lead, but Dave McNally gives it all back. Uh, you don't see the errors here, but a couple singles off the glove of Bobby Gritch, the shortstop. Bobby Gritch, we would know, would be a second baseman. The Orioles are playing him at short because they don't have Mark Belanger, the regular shortstop, who they couldn't keep. They can't keep all their guys, folks. That's the beauty of a carryover league. Uh, they get taken away by these expansion teams. Expanding from 24 to 32 teams, you can't keep all the guys you had on your world championship teams. None of them can. Reds, Pirates, you know, Mets, you know, the A's, they can't keep all those guys. So they get taken away from them. And in that particular case, the defense at shortstop is gone from Baltimore. The defense in right field, you saw, is gone from Baltimore. That used to be Frank Robinson in right field. Some on the Orioles clearly miss a guy they traded in the offseason. Uh, it's an 8-7 final. Uh, Sparky Lyle, in his effort to close the game out, gives up two runs in the ninth, but still gets to save as the Orioles... Uh, do not tie the game. 8-7. Yankees up 2-0 at home. Baltimore. Can you believe it? At this moment, they have a losing record. That's right, folks. The Pittsburgh Pirates in the National League and the Orioles at this moment in the American League, the teams who played in the 1971 World Series have losing records. It's been that kind of kooky and competitive year. So, we go to Baltimore's Memorial Stadium. Ain't the beer cold? Game number three. Yankees at Orioles. It's Fritz Peterson for the Yankees. 
Jim Palmer having a brilliant year for the Orioles. Uh, Bobby Gritz leads off the game with a homer. Greg Nettles hits a homer. It's 1-1 until the bottom of the sixth when, I just mentioned it before, Boog Pal. Boog Pal again, folks. A two-run homer, and that's your ball game. 3-1 Orioles. Palmer goes the distance, and the Orioles avoid the 0-3 hole. The home team has won all three games. Can the Orioles even it up in a game four at home? Let's check it out. We have Mike Kekich. Uh, well-rested, number four starter, against Cuellar, pitching on short rest. Last time we saw Mike Cuellar, he gave up nine unearned runs in the second inning. In this game, a walk, a double play, and then an error, setting up one, two, three, four more unearned runs in the second inning. Mike Cuellar has given up 13 unearned runs in the second inning in his two starts. But the good news is the Orioles come back. A homer by Kurt Motten. A homer by Boog Pow. Then in the bottom of the sixth inning, pinch hitter Kurt Bleffrey, a guy who played for the Orioles in the 60s, then he went away. They brought him back in the early 70s for this carryover league. Gives the Yankee, the Orioles a lead over the Yankees bullpen, which has been terrible this year. The Yankees come back and tie it in the seventh with a Bobby Mercer single. But in the bottom of the seventh, again off of Fred Bean, it is Boog Pal, folks, with an RBI double, six to five. Grant Jackson is brought in in the eighth inning, the highest paid reliever in baseball, well, based on draft tokens. The Orioles traded 20 game winner Pat Dobson to Philadelphia to bring in Grant Jackson. And two shutout innings, four strikeouts. The Orioles tie the series two games apiece. Game number five in Baltimore. And it is going to be Mel Stoudemire and Dave McNally, both on short rest. In the second inning, Greg Nettles, a.k.a. Oriole killer Greg Nettles, three-run homer. But in the bottom of the second, it's Boog Pal, folks. Solo homer. After a walk, it's Kurt Bleffrey. Two-run homer, and it's a 3-3 game. Into the fourth, uh, we get a sack fly by Davey Johnson and Don Buford. It's 5-3. In the sixth, Bobby Mercer makes it 5-4. In the eighth, Brooks Robinson, solo homer. Orioles hitting a ton of home runs in this series. But they need to. They have an anemic offense otherwise. They take a 6-4 lead. Dave McNally continues into the ninth inning. He'll go eight and a third innings. Uh, Dick Hall comes on in for the final two outs. And the Orioles have won three straight at home. 6-4 is the final. The home team has won every game in this series. Let's take a current look at the standings as we're getting closer to the All-Star break. In the American League East, we have, here we go, the Red Sox have not played yet. They have to play the Blue Jays. The Orioles are a game and a half behind Boston, but theoretically, the Red Sox will probably handle the Blue Jays and knock them closer to the last place where the Yankees currently are. Toronto Blue Jays, folks, are the kind of the story in all this. Why are they 11 and 13? They didn't even exist during this timeline, but they're playing good baseball. So, game number six. We have that for you tonight in Yankee Stadium. Interesting matchup for the Orioles. They will turn to their number four starter. Hasn't pitched in a while. It's Milt Pappas. Again, another returning Oriole player. Pappas pitched for the Orioles in the 60s. They brought him back from the Cubs. They're using his 1972 Chicago Cub card. They reacquired him uh, since Pat Dobson, the 20-game winner, moved out of the rotation. Mill Pappas is a 17-game winner, which is good enough. And for the Yankees, here's a nice good pitcher. Uh, 1972, Jim McAndrew, 11 and 8 with a 2.80 ERA, he did it for the New York Mets. Who, once again, the Mets can't keep all their guys. 
the best teams in this era, they can't keep all their guys and some valuable pieces, get uh, taken to other franchises. Game six, Yankee Stadium. Let's get started. Don Buford leads it all for Baltimore. 5-10 is a walk. The Orioles have not tempted many stolen bases in the series because Thurman Munson's got a minus three arm. Buford will stay put at first base. The top of the Baltimore lineup is has a lot of on-base percentage with walks, so no sense running carelessly to second base attempting a steal. Bobby Gritch is the hitter. 68, sky's the right. 1973 American League Rookie of the Year, Al Bumbry, bats third. 1-5, let's take a look at the Al Bumbry card that was brought into circulation which ultimately forced the Frank Robinson trade I did in the offseason. The Orioles saw the writing on the wall. They didn't have spots in the lineup for all these guys. Buford, Blair, Bumbry, and Frank Robinson. Somebody had to go. So they sent old Frank Robinson to the Cleveland Indians, since the Cleveland Indians are no longer in the American League East in this league, in the realignment. With all that, 1-5 for Bumbry. gets Homer, 1-9, to nine, double. And he rolls a seven, and that is a two-run homer for Al Bumbry. The Orioles getting plenty of long balls in this series. That's what they need. That's what they've been missing um, prior to this series. So, with two in and one out, it is the suddenly hot Boog Pal. 43 off McAndrew. Sky's the left. This is Roy White. Good defensive left fielder. A 2 e 2 Makes the catch. And with two outs, the number five hitter is Paul Blair. 2-4. Sky's the center. 2 nothing Baltimore. Bottom of the first. Bobby Mercer leads it off. 35 is a base hit for the 331 hitting Mercer. B Steeler. We got Johnny Oates with a minus one arm. But the Yankees are down two. But Horace Clark, batting second, loves to hit and run with a guy at first. And he's going to attempt to hit and run here. And he gets the five single on the hit and run to perfection. And the Yankees have base runners on the corners with nobody out. With Ron Blomberg coming to the plate. Let's take a look at Ron's 1971 card. 322 with about 200 at-bats. This would be before... He becomes the America League's first DH because they didn't have a DH in 71. We, of course, have a universal DH in our carryover league. And actually, Bloomberg's actually playing right field today, not even playing DH. Jake Gibbs is doing that. The pitch to Ron Bloomberg. 37 for him is single 1 to 15, but he rolls a 20. Big break for Milt Pappas on the line out. Roy White. Batting cleanup because he has 22 home runs on his card in 1970. And uh, the Yankees don't have a lot of good right-handed hitters, and so they use a switch hitter here in Roy White batting fourth. 112 for Roy White is a low max. And that is disaster for the Yankees in the first. The line drive to second baseman, and he catches Horace Clark drifting off the bag at first for the double play. We go to the top of the second. It's Brooks Robinson. 57's a K. Kurt Bluffrey, 5'11", bounces to short. Stick Michael, a two at shortstop, makes the play. And Dave Johnson, the second baseman, pops to second. Bottom of two, it's Jake Gibbs, 39. It is a sky to center. Greg Nettles, 4'4", four, four off Pappas. Home run automatic. Greg Nettles kills the Orioles. It's his third home run of the series in five or six games. And it's two to one Orioles. Dan Danny Cater. Two sevens a single. And here's Munson. Three elevens a hit by the pitch. Pappas losing it here in the second inning. He's put five guys on in the first eight batters. Gene Michael, two on, one out. Three ten for stick. Flies to right field. And with two outs. It's the dangerous Bobby Mercer. Let's took a look at the 331 hitter. He's had great success with this card in the last few years I've used it. He's been at two All-Star games, looking to go for his third straight All-Star game with this card, representing center field in the American League. Probably the American League's best center fielder. So there we go. Big moment here as his team is down 2-1 in the second inning. The pitch to Bobby Mercer. 
511 off Pappas is a bouncer to second base. And this is Davey Johnson, a 2E8 second baseman. And he makes the play. So the Yankees leave four men on already in this game. We go to the third. It's Johnny Oates, 47 as a K. Don Buford, 57. This guy's right. And Bobby Gritch, 111, rolls a short. Bottom of the third, it's Horace Clark. 58 lines a short. Ron Blomberg, 510 is a walk. Roy White, 1-9. Let's take a look at the Roy White card. You'll see why we decided to bat him clean up, folks, against right-handers. Plenty of power, 22 home runs. I know he should be probably the leadoff hitter, but we really needed to have... We have this string of left-handed hitters here. Bloomberg gives and Nettles, and we wanted to break it up. We didn't want to have four lefties in a row or five, you know. So that's why Roy White's breaking them up. And speaking of breaking them up, 1-9, Homer, 1-3, to three, double. That is going to be a double to center field. Bloomberg, who is a surprising 15 runner, but it's Blair in center. He will not take on the Blair arm. So he'll stay put at third base with just one out. Orioles will bring the infield up here for Jake Gibbs. 310 is right B question mark. Now in right field, you got Al Bumbry with a plus two arm. So uh, yeah, he'll run off of him. And that is a sack fly. We have a 2-2 game with a runner at second and two outs. And Greg Nettles. 48, base hit the right field. Roy White, you know he's going to run off that weak arm in right field. And he scores. And the Yankees take a 3-2 lead. Danny Cater. 2-6, single to center. Nettles will hold at second with two outs. It's Thurman Munson. 2-7's a walk. Base is loaded. Two outs. Milt Pappas in danger of breaking early in this one. He's put one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But there's some walks involved. If you put 12 on with four walks, I'll call you broken. One, two, three, four, seven. My goodness. One more hit and walk, and I'll call you broken. Matter of fact, if the Yankees bat around in the inning, I'll call them broken. Base is loaded. Two outs for Stick Michael. Five, ten off of Pappas is a bases loaded walk. My goodness. Four to two. Too much rust for Milt. And with a 4-2 to two game, it's the dangerous Bobby Mercer. If he gets on, Pappas will be broken. The pitch to Bobby Mercer. 65, skies the center. So it is only a 4-2 to two game. Pappas has done everything you could think of to get kicked out of this game, but hasn't. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... 7, 8, 9, 10, 8, 11. He had one more batter. If he puts uh, two men on in the fourth, we'll call him broken. We'll just keep pushing that until he gets, uh, until he stays himself. Uh, we go to the top of the fourth, and it's going to be Al Bumbry. 65. Sky's the center. Boog Pal. 56 off McAndrew is double one of 12. Base hit. And the tie run is Paul Blair. 1-9 for Paul Blair. Double 1-3. Single dot dot is a single. You got runners in the corners and a speedy guy being held at first. Playing back and holding, hoping for a Brooks Robinson double play. The pitch to Brooks Robinson. 2-9. Let's take a look at Brooksy's card from 1970. Of course, this card would be the MVP of the 70 World Series. The Hoover vacuum cleaner for his defensive prowess. He hit 276 with 18 homers in this year. 29, homer 1 to 3, double. Rolls a 14. That's going to be a double to center. You got Paul Blair thinking about rounding third here as a 16 runner. You got a minus 2 arm Mercer. He's going to try 1 to 14 to tie this thing. And he rolls an 11. Blair slides into home when the game is tied at 2. Tied at four, excuse me, four to four with a runner at second and one out. It's going to be Kurt Bleffrey. Two eight is a walk. Mick Andrews struggling now. Davey Johnson, 64 catcher's card, but Munson is a 1 e 7. 
That's going to be a foul out. First and second, two outs, Johnny Oates in a 4-4 game. 2-11, pops to second base. So, interesting here, Pappas taking off the hook for a loss. Um, so you think you might want to... They just don't have... If they had a left-handed reliever to turn some guys around, that'd be great. They have Grant Jackson. He's the closer, so they're not going to do that. But what they could do is, to be creative is... And they're going to do it. They are going to... They got Jim Palmer pitching Game 7 if necessary. So they're going to unload the bullpen here. So Mill Pappas is going to be gone after three. He's taking off the hook for a potential loss. And they're going to turn this thing over to this guy, Bill Wilson. He was acquired from the Phillies along with Grant Jackson in that big offseason trade that sent draft tokens and Pat Dobson to the Phillies. Bill Wilson, you look at this guy's card, and he does not allow any hits to left-handed batters. And the Yankees have a ton of them. So he will come on in the fourth inning as a relief three. Seldom used Bill Wilson in the fourth inning. And he will face the leadoff guy as Horace Clark. 48 for Horace is a strikeout. Ron Bloomberg. 1-5, bounce to second. And Roy White. 65, skies the center field. We go to the fifth. It's going to be Don Buford. 5-12, bounces to second X. Clark's at three at second base, and he makes the play. Bobby Gritch. 4-11, skies the right field. Now this is Blomborg, a 49. Not good defense, and it is a single. Gritch is a beast stealer. He'll be held on, but he won't try and steal. It'll be Al Bunbury. 46 Bunbury, second X. Here's McC here is uh, Clark again, a 316 at second base. And it is a GBA on the 316 second baseman. Tough break for the Orioles. And it stays tied at four, going to the bottom of the fifth. Let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. All right, it'll be Jake Gibbs in the bottom of the fifth. 35 is a strikeout. Greg Nettles, 612, skies to right field. And Danny Cater, 312 Lomax. And Bill Wilson is the ticket. Six straight outs for the reliever. We go to the sixth inning. McAndrews a starter seven, but he's very good. The Yankees also have the best, supposedly, preseason at least, the best bullpen in all of baseball. But they have been getting torched this year, so they're, you know, they should be going to them at will, but they're hesitant to use these relievers because bad things happen to the Yankee relievers this year. They got like six losses. But of all these guys, Bean has been the most successful. They got four closers, folks. Fred Bean, Lenny McDaniel, Jack Aker, and Sparky Lyle. So, it's the strength of the team. So, if they can get a lead, they might, uh, you know, go to that pen. But in a tie game, they'll leave McAndrew in there. Boo Pow, 57. is a sky to right. Paul Blair, 55. Triple 103 is a base hit. A stealer. Brooksy, this time, he doubled last time. He's going to do a little hit-and-run action here. Rolls an eight, so it puts the runner in scoring position. With two outs for Kurt Bluffrey. 38 is ball four. Two on, two outs for Davey Johnson. One on seven is a strikeout. The Orioles strand three guys. Actually, they strand five guys in the last three innings. We go to the bottom of the sixth. It'll be Thurman Munson leading off. 1-4, skies to center. Stick Michael, 52, pops to second. And Bobby Mercer. 2-9, rolls to third. The Bill Wilson moment. How about that, folks? Nine up and down. That was the move to get Pappas out of there. 4-4, four, four, we go to the seventh. McAndrews breaking inning. Johnny Oates, we have one, two... Four of the next five guys are left-handed. And the Yankees only have, they're like the Orioles, they only have one lefty in the pen, Sparky Lyle. And the Orioles have just Grant Jackson. 
So Johnny Oates will lead off in the seventh. 68 pops to first. Don Buford. 65, sky is the center. With two outs, it's Bobby Gritch. 45 pops to second base. McAndrew settles down. Stretch time in Yankee Stadium of a thriller. 4-4 tie. Uh, we have been listening to the quiet tones of Paul Desmond's Falling in Love with Paul Desmond uh, comp. This is a bunch of recordings from the 60s. He did Glad to be Unhappy, Easy Living. Let's get something a little bit more juiced going here, if that's such a thing. Real quiet record here. Anyway, back to the game. Bottom of the seventh. Bill Wilson, a relief three. They're going to push him for a fourth inning. Because they know he's not going to pitch in game seven anyway. Horace Clark. 64 off Wilson, his third X. Brooksy, a 1 18 at third base. Makes the play. Ron Blomborg, he is over two plus a walk and scored a run. 2 4, misses that big column, rolls to short. And Roy White misses that homer earlier, was a double. That's a key moment of the game. 1-4, Roy White skies to right field. Inning is over. We're going to have to punch out Bill Wilson. Would love to leave the guy in, but he is a relief three, and he's just pitched four innings, and that is a wonderful performance. Don't want to taint it. 12 up and down. And this is a big story if the Yankees can fin come back and the Orioles can finish off the Yankees today and get back into that American League East title run with the Red Sox. We'll say it's because Bill Wilson uh, shut the bleeding down from the beginning of this mess. McAndrew, in the eighth inning, well, does he go back out there? Let's think about it first. You got Bumbry and Boog. You could bring in Sparky now, knowing it's an elimination game and it's tied, and you've got a bunch of relievers. We might see a whole tr bunch of these guys. Baltimore's already lost a reliever, Bill Wilson. So the Yankees could, yeah, they're going to do it. They're going to pull McAndrew after seven and go to Sparky Lyle now. He is a relief three. In game seven, if there is one, the Yankees would turn to Fritz Peterson, a lefty. So Sparky Lyle will come on in now in the eighth inning and pitch as far as he can, three innings. And the Orioles, notoriously, Sparky Lyle was better against righties and lefties. And when you look at the card, it's, yeah, it kind of is that way. So Bumbry, who's not very good against lefties, will bat, will stick, will stick around and bat in the game. He's dangerous if he can get on base anyway. So here's the pitch to Al Bumbry. 2-6 is a walk. They walked Bumbry, the ace stealer. Munson's on alert, though the Orioles have not tried him yet. And they're not, certainly not going to try him now with Boog Palab. Let's take a look at Boog's card. So, if you're wondering about this slump, he came into this series hitting 169. And in five games, has brought his average up to 226, which is pretty respectable. That's 50-some points. And he's homered today, and he's homered in uh, four of the five games. So, Boog Pal, uh, he's already continued his hitting streak, but can he continue his RBI streak? The pitch to Boog Pal, 55 off Lyle is short X. Oh no, this is Stick Michael, a two at short. And that is a 6-4-3 double play with an assist by Munson for keeping Al Bumbry at first base. So with two outs, it's Paul Blair. 210 rolls to short. So Lyle uh, holds serve. We go to the bottom of the eighth, and now the Orioles have to figure out how they want to play Gibbs Nettles. I think they're gonna they're gonna yeah, they're gonna do the solution of Bill Wilson, which is Grant Jackson, who actually is left-handed. So they're gonna go to Grant Jackson now in the eighth, kind of matching Lyle in a chess game here. Uh, if it does go 12, 15 innings, though, the Yankees will have the last laugh, I suppose, um, as their bullpen gets better and the Orioles' bullpen gets worse. So Grant Jackson in the eighth inning as a relief three. be interesting to see 
with Jackson and Lyle how long they do go with Game 7 on the horizon. The Yankees, Jake Gibbs is the scheduled hitter, but they're going to pull him, and this is kind of a two moves at once. They're going to pinch hit Mike Hershberger. Take a look at Mike Hershberger. Nice card against lefties with homers and walks, but he's a two right fielder. So in one move, they're going to make him the new right fielder, and Blomberg will be the new DH. So Mike Hershberger leads off as a pinch hitter in the eighth. The pitch to Mike. 2 8 is a bounce to short. And now it's Greg Nettles, homered earlier. Oriole killer. Lefties or righties, doesn't matter. 4 9 flies left. With two outs, it's Danny Cater. 2-7 is a single. And with two outs, it's Thurman Munson. Let's take a look at the 1973 Thurman Munson card. Doesn't go to a World Series, doesn't win an MVP with this card, but could be his best card of the decade. A minus three arm. Now, he did have a minus four arm in 1970, but he didn't have power against righties with that 70 card. In 73, Thurman at 301 with 20 homers. Factor in the arm. I think it might be the best card of the decade. Big moment for him and the Yankees here with two outs and a man at first. The pitch to Thurman Munson. 67 off Grant Jackson is a walk. Two on, two outs, and here is Stick Michael. 62 off Grant Jackson is a strikeout. We'll go to the ninth. The game, the bullpens are matching up against each other. Sparky Lyle in his second inning. It'll be Brooks Robinson in the ninth leading off. 111 bounces to short. The batter's Kurt Bleffrey. Batting for Kurt Bleffrey will be Kurt Mutton. Let's take a look at Kurt Mutton. He was a pinch hitter for the 71 Orioles, mostly against left-handed pitching, such as this one. The pitch to Kurt Martin. 68 is a sky to right. And with two outs, it's Dave Johnson. 411 rolls to first. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Top of the a Yankee lineup. Bobby Mercer hits lefties fine. We'll lead off the bottom of the ninth. 69 off of Grant Jackson is single 1 to 10. He rolls a 7 and gets the single. Now he is a B stealer. And. You got a minus one arm catcher. We talked about Horace Clark and liking to hit and run. He did it way back in the first inning, but then they didn't score. They're going to try the same strategy. Horace Clark hit and run. Rolls a nine. That's a fielder's choice. Now you got Clark still being held on at first as a B stealer, but you got Ron Bloomberg at DH. Now he's okay against lefties. Uh, we could improve that by going to the bench. And we may as well. And now it's a pinch hitter. Batting for Bloomberg, who didn't have any power and didn't have any on base against lefties, will be Celerino Sanchez is the pinch hitter. Let's take a look at Celerino. 1972. Had about 250 at-bats for those Yankees at 248. Uh, good defense and uh, nice bat against left-handed uh, pitching, which was what we have. So here's the pitch to Celerino Sanchez. 34 is a 6-4-3 double play. This could be a long game, folks. we got some great pitchers in the bullpens here. We'll go to the 10th. Johnny Oates' final uh, Sparky Lyle versus Johnny Oates in Lyle's final inning. We're going to have a pinch hitter, though, Andy Echebaron. Take a look at Andy. We'll bat for Oates. He's the platoon catcher. Andy Echebaron leading off in the 10th. 37 is a single. As a 10 runner. Top of the lineup now. You got Buford. Better against righties and lefties. The pitch to Don Buford. 2-8 is single dot dot for Buford and Lyle's in trouble. Not only is he in trouble, he's also a batter away from breaking here with runners in the corners and nobody out. It's Gritch, Bumbry, Pal, and Blair. 
I think you got to go with Sparky Lyle. You just have to push him. He is your, uh, again, Sparky Lyle, 1972, he had a 192 ERA. I think this was his first year out of Fenway uh, after being traded. And, uh, you know, he would win a Cy Young later in the decade, but I think this is a better card than his Cy Young card he got in 77, I think. He's got a bear down now. The infield is up and holding as you got speed with Buford at first. And it's going to be Bobby Gritch. 612 off of Lyle is center C. Hit in the center field, but too shallow, and the runners stay where they're at. And now you got Al Bumbry with runners on the corners. The infield is still up. Bumbry also has ground ball B's on his card. They do have Roy Foster on the bench, but Lyle's better against righties. And Foster's kind of in the doghouse a little bit. They're going to stick with Al Bumbry. Bumbry's going to continue. He has a homer in this game. So the pitch to Al Bumbry. The infield up. 54 lines to short. And with two outs, oh boy, folks. The man, the big story right now for the Baltimore Orioles, the 1970 American League Most Viable Player, Boog Powell. They need him again in this series to come through here in the top of the 10th after putting runners in the corners with nobody out. Boog Powell, do you have one more hit in you? The pitch to Boog Powell. 42, he skies the right field and Sparky Lyle does it. He gets out of the net. They couldn't get him out of there. He'll probably leave after those three innings. And Grant Jackson's going to try and match him in the bottom of the frame. Leading off in the bottom half will be Roy White. 65 off of Grant is double one to two. Fly ball the rest, and he gets the fly ball the rest. Mike Hershberger, who was announced as a pinch hitter a few innings ago. 42, rolls to first. And with two outs, it's Greg Nettles. 1-6 for Nettles, a base hit, of course. He's only got three hits today. Only three. Um, Runner at first, two outs. Danny Cater does not have power. Probably can't score Nettles from first with, with a triple or homer in this instance. 5-10 off of Grant Jackson is a catcher's card. Now, Etchebaron has got a high E rating. He's a 3-E-13 here. But he gets a pass ball foul out. And that'll be the end of the left-handed relievers of both squads. 10 in the books in a 4-4 thriller. The Yankees. <laughs> this is their season. They're trying to hold on to third place. Otherwise, yeah, it's curtains and they're going to be toast. We'll go to the 12th, uh, 11th inning. Blair, Robinson, Motten. So you want a righty who gets righties out. That sounds like Jack Aker. A relief three. His stats, folks. 1970. Uh, 2.06 ERA in seven innings for the Yankees. I'm telling you, great bullpen. Well, really for both teams. Uh, but Jack Aker in the 11th will face Paul Blair leading off. 66 is a base hit off the Aker card. And it's Brooks Robinson. And I'm smelling another hit and run opportunity here. And Brooks is going to try it. The hit and run. He rolls the seven. You got to steal a base. And he rolls a three. And you steal on Munson. Now, what is Munson's T rating? Munson is a T128. And he rolls a 10. So the ball does not travel into center field. It just rolls past second base and quickly gloved by Stick Michael. So Blair stays put at second base. Now Brooksy, with a runner at second and nobody out, you'd like to get the runner to the third with one out, but he's a C bunter. I am not a fan of bunting C bunters from second to third. I just don't like it, so I'm not gonna do it. Brooksy's gonna hit away here. The pitch to Brooks Robinson. 46 is a pop to short. So Blair's still at second with one out. And it's Kurt Mutton, and it won't be Kurt Mutton. So batting for Mutton, the final guy on the bench, Roy Foster, he'll be the new DH. Actually, he'll be the new right fielder. Bumbry will go to DH. Let's take a look at Roy Foster. He was acquired from the Cleveland Indians in the Frank Robinson trade. And in 1970, for those Indians, Roy hit 268 with 23 home runs. So that's a nice prize to get back if you're going to lose Frank Robinson. So, 
here we are with Roy Foster in the pitch. 49 is a pop to second. And with two outs and Blair still at second, it'll be Dave Johnson. 59, skies the right field. The Orioles are showing the problems. If they don't get the long ball, it's hard to get this offense going. They've left uh, three runners on base, four runners on base in the extra innings. Grant Jackson is gone. So the way this will play out is the Orioles will have to go to Dick Hall. <laughs> have to go to him. He's a relief four, for Pete's sakes. And Jim Harden is a starter six, relief three. So the Orioles actually have a lot of innings available. But they're going to go to Dick Hall here in the bottom of the 11th inning. Folks, I hope you packed a lunch for this one. This could go on a while. I got a sleeping bag and some potable water in case I have to camp out for this game. It's going to get crazy, I fear. Dick Hall in the bottom of 11th will face Thurman Munson, this time against a right-handed batter pitcher. The pitch to Thurman. 2-6 is a base hit. He's a 12 base runner, D Steeler. Gene Michael, another C bunner. At a certain point, though, you have to try it, I think. And Michael's going to bunt because he's such a bad hitter as a C bunner. Here's the bunt. And it is barely good. It's an 8. That's barely good. A 9 or 10 would be out. So he does get it down. And now you got Munson, a 12 runner at second. And you've got Mercer and Clark. You almost want to walk Mercer here, but. Because you got Clark, Celerino Sanchez, and Roy White. Awful tempting. I think you want to do it. It's the first inning of relief anyway. We're walking Bobby Mercer. We're going to intentionally walk Bobby Mercer to put first and second with one out. Because Horace Clark and Celerino Sanchez don't scare anybody. On the bench, you've got Ron Slocum, who doesn't scare anybody. So here is Horace Clark. For 12 off of Dick Hall's pitcher B. That will get a runner to third with two outs for Celerino Sanchez. A wild pitcher pass ball can also win this game. The pitch to Celerino Sanchez. 47 off of Dick Hall is a strikeout. And each of the 11th inning pitchers continues into the 12th. Jack Aker and uh, Dick Hall. So in the 12th, it'll be Andy Echebaron leading off. 4-12, sky's the left. Top of the order now with Don Buford. 43, first X. Both first basemen are two E12s at first. Easy to remember. A two E12 makes the play. And with two outs, it's Bobby Gritch. 4-4 is third X and Nettles. Heck, Nettles and Brooksy are both ones at third base. These teams are very evenly matched. He's a 1-E16, and he makes the play. We go to the bottom of the 12th. So with the spreadsheet, all you do is you just keep filling in the next available space, and you keep working your way back until hopefully you get fewer than an 18-inning game. So in the bottom of the 12th, it'll be Roy White against Dick Hall. Roy White, 1-5 is a walk. He is an ace stealer. Now, you have improved your catching with Echebaron. Echebaron's got a minus two arm. We're gonna pull Paul Desmond down a little bit here as we're getting into some big strategy in the end game here. We have Roy White as an ace stealer, minus two arm. Hirschberger does not hit righties very well at all. He could hit and run which is what a lot of these players are doing because they don't hit very well. Uh, so we'll have another hit-and-run attempt. We might set a record for those tonight. So Hershberger is going to hit and run with Roy White at first. He rolls a 7. Runner has to steal, rolls an 18, and whoopsie, whoopsie. That's why you don't hit and run, folks. That's why you don't do that. So now you've got an out, and now you got Mike Hershberger up. Hershberger swung through that one and grounds a short on this one. And with two outs, here he is, Greg Nettles. He only has three hits so far in this game with a homer. I almost want to walk him as well, but they're going to pitch to Greg Nettles. Here we go. 1-7. Yeah, that's a walk. I don't think any of those pitches were close to the strike zone. 
So he's at first for Danny Cater. Same situation we had uh, previously. The pitch to Danny Cater. 57 off of Dick Hell is a pop to first base. My goodness, 12 in the books. Acres of relief three, halls of relief four. We go to the top of the 13th inning. It'll be Al Bumbry for the Orioles. 34, grounds of the pitcher. Hey, you're Boog Pal. You got one hit today. Could use another one. The pitch to Boog. 2-9 is a grounder to second. And with two outs, it's Paul Blair. 57 off Aker is a strikeout. Well, the good news for the Orioles is that guy's gone after three innings. And Dick Hall will attempt his third shutout inning. It'll be Danny Cater leading off. 69. Here's a big hit. Double one a seven. And he gets a double on a four. Hold on one second. That was actually uh, Munson. Excuse me. Yes, Munson got the double. Same situation. Right-handed hitter, not Cater. Cater made the last out of the last inning. Munson gets the leadoff double. Now, he let off one of these innings with a single and was bunted to second. He's already at second. And I definitely don't like to bunt a guy to third with a C bunner. That's... Plus, the last time we used strategy, we had this screwed up hit and run. So we got a runner scoring position with nobody out. We're going to let Michael, Mercer, and Clark try and win this thing. Gene Michael. Stick Michael. The pitch. Three, six. Let's take a look at Stick Michael's card. He's trying, folks. He is trying with this card as best he can. He hit his column. But when you hit only 214, you might not have a lot of good stuff in the column. Here, however, it's single one to 11, and he rolls a four. Stick Michael with a bloop single. Nettles go, uh, Munson goes to third. Now the Yankees have this thing in great shape. Runners on the corners, nobody out. You got Mercer. I don't like walking him because the chances of Clark Sanchez or Roy White walking or getting a pass ball are really high. You just have to suck it up and pitch to Bobby Mercer with the infield up and nobody out. Yeah, it's, this is Dick Hall's game. So here he is, folks. Bobby Mercer. He is two for five plus a walk. No bigger moment here. Trying to force a game seven. The pitch to Bobby Mercer. 310 is single, 1 and 19. I'm not going to look. Well, of course. It is a 12. He does get it. And there's your ball game. It took 13 innings. And sadly for Dick Hall, he didn't get anybody out in the 13th inning. He will take the loss. It is a 5 4 Yankee win to force a game seven. My goodness. Well, folks. What I'm going to do here, when I have an extra inning game like this, it takes a long time to score it. So I am just going to save this game and take a break, and I'll come back with the box score and the results of Game 7. We'll give you all that after the break. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Well, sports fans, this is the box of the game you just saw, the 13-inning affair. So why, the reason it's... I take time to score it is uh, once you start turning around like this I like to code each of the pitchers performances for scoring purposes and uh, it was a masterful game uh, the Orioles put 13 men on base the Yankees put 22 on base so the Yankees kind of deserved to win that game and they did uh, Pappas's horrific start uh, the Orioles uh, ultimately survived that but couldn't quite finish the task um, the Yankee bullpen, six shutout innings. Uh, uh, the Oriole bullpen, actually nine innings of one run ball. Uh, which sets up a classic game seven, folks, which I'm about to show you. Oh my gosh, I tell you, for a regular season series, this is one of the best and most dramatic series I've ever had. Six games. Uh, the home teams won every game, though. That, I'm not a big fan of that. I like to see a road win every once in a while. Do we get it in Game 7? Let's take a look and find out. Game 7 from Yankee Stadium. The Orioles will send out Jim Palmer. He is undefeated this year against Fritz Peterson. But in the first inning, the Yankees get a successful hit and run. You got runners on the corners. 
Roy White, a two-run double. Then in the third inning, the Yankees are hitting, knocking Palmer around. RBI double, RBI single by Gibbs and, of course, a Cater. So it's four to nothing. But the Orioles finally wake up with that long ball, the thing that had been eluding them in the game you saw, but was so successful previous to that. Nothing going on in the fifth with two strikeouts. Then you get a Buford walk and a Brooks Robinson two-run homer to cut the lead in half. Then in the sixth inning, uh, after an out, a couple singles, and then it's Paul Blair off of Fritz Peterson. Three-run homer, and the Orioles take a 5-4 lead. And Kurt Motten, solo shot, to give him a 6-4 lead. This gives the rejuvenated Jim Palmer time to settle down. He, he's a starter eight, but he needs to go eight or nine innings because he doesn't have his bullpen available. So he does settle down. He only gives up a hit in the sixth. Uh, three up and three down in the fifth and seventh innings, a hit in the eighth, then in the bottom of the ninth, trying to get a six to five win. He gets Bobby Mercer to foul out. Then Horace Clark got injured in this game, so Ron Slocum is playing second. Ron Slocum does not have a hit on his card against right-handed pitchers, so Palmer immediately walks the guy, inexplicably. So the tie runs at first, Ron Bloomberg rolls triple, one to eight, single dot dot, misses it, rolls a nine. That's still just a single dot dot. You got runners in the corners, one out. Roy White, long fly ball is a sack fly. That, make, that cuts the lead to six to four. Uh, excuse me, six to five from six to four. And then with a runner at first and two outs, Jim Palmer, not quite broken. One base runner in the eighth, two base runners in the ninth. He gets Jake Gibbs to fly out to deep center field in Yankee Stadium to end the series. It is a complete game for Jim Palmer. Nine innings, 12 hits, five runs, four walks, three strikeouts. And we'll look at the stats and see how remarkable his season has been. Fritz Peterson, unfortunately, could not keep the ball in the park, and that killed him. He pitched pretty darn good, except for the balls that flew out. Uh, six hits, six runs, a walk and three strikeouts. Lindy McDaniel, three shutout innings. But the final is six to five, one to nine, 0109, 0109, six, eight, five, 12, four, five, four, three. And when we go to the stats for both squads, this is current. Uh, let's start with Baltimore. The Orioles are hitting 238 as a team with a 307 ERA. Uh, in the bullpen, it's <laughs> they've been involved in a lot of stuff here uh, as they have four wins, six losses, and eight saves. Dick Hall has, is one and four. Um, Grant Jackson has two losses and has only given up two earned runs this year. Five uh, total runs. <laughs> the Oriole rotation, if you're not named Jim Palmer, Mike Cuellar, and McNally are four and seven, and Pappas is, make, makes four and eight. It is Jim Palmer having a charmed season. He is eight and O. Oh, 77 innings, 26 hits. Let's see what that is. 304 ERA. I'll give it five runs in that game you just saw. Um, but eight and O oh will certainly get him into the All Star game, you'd think. Baltimore's hitters. Nothing really sticks out because, again, they're hitting 238. So what is Boog Pal up to? Well, 26 for 115, 226. Like I said, it, it would have, but it was hitting 170, so that's that's progress. Uh, Paul Blair, I think, is having a nice year. Yes, 33 for 120. Hey, 275. Man, that's like hitting 400 if you're Baltimore. So, uh, yeah, the Orioles are 16 to 14. The Yankees, on the other hand, boy, they have had a tough, tough season. What really hurt the Yankees this year is that they did not play the Blue Jays very well. And you're supposed to beat up on Toronto since they didn't exist during this time. The Yankees did not. And they didn't play well against Boston or Baltimore either. So the Yankees are 13 and 18 of the All-Star break and will probably miss out on the playoffs this year. Hitting 253 with a 393 ERA. And look no further than what I once called the best bullpen in baseball. Because they are three and seven 
with six saves. Sparky Lyle, nine runs in 16 innings. That ERA is above five. Jack Aker, eight and 17, around four and a half. Lanny McDaniel, seven and 15. That's not a good ERA. And Fred Bean is the good reliever, just two runs in 15 innings. Uh, is Bobby Mercer going back to the All-Star game? He has 42 hits and 125 at bats. 336 for Bobby Mercer with his 331 card. Well, the Yankees need a representative. It might be him. Uh, and then when we look at the standings in the American League East, as we go into the break, again, the Red Sox and the Blue Jays still have to play. But the Orioles did pick up a half a game in this series on the Boston. And they have to hope uh, for a miracle of the, by the Toronto Blue Jays uh, if they want to uh, get, a, get a lead in the American League East. So that's it today. Thanks for checking out this long video, but it was two great teams playing a great series. So I don't mind spending the extra time when it's such classic baseball to be played. Uh, thanks for checking out the videos. We'll see you next time.